ஆ சார் சொல்லுங்க சார் ஸ்ட்ரீமிங் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணியாச்சு ஆல்ரெடி ஆன் போய் ஆமாம் ஆமாம் சார் செக் பண்ணுங்க ஒர்க்கிங் ஃபைன்
lot of things uh, with it. Uh, that is one added advantage. And regarding the speed, it can uh, it can match with the uh, fixed wing aircrafts if it is properly uh, designed. Uh, of course, the designs will change if the, if you give priority to the speed uh, everything. So we'll talk about the cameras or batteries in the upcoming sessions, like uh, in the next next slides. So same he. Uh, he tried to escape from the prison, uh, which has been in an isolated island. Uh, he tried he tried creating wax wings and then tried to fly away from the prison. Uh, it's one of the interesting stories, and he dies in the midway because of the heat by the sun. Uh, it it vap uh, it vapors the wax and va wax gets evaporated and he falls into the sea. It is just a mythological story. Uh, I just want to share it for the interesting part. So, <clears throat> let's go to the next part. Yeah. So this is one of the surveillance application, coastal guard application, uh, where uh, they categorize this in terms of ranges. So this is long range U.S. vehicles. Uh, this one looks like a, a, a MP9 Keeper a Reaper drone, uh, the military aircrafts, one of the military aircrafts. And uh, this is medium range U.S.s uh, where uh, they they do surveillance. This both long range and medium range, they use the GPS to uh, track into the system and then the main advantage of the long range is even it can it can traverse uh, in in points where it is beyond line of sight also for, for a wide range of area like uh, more than uh, five kilometers or something or 10 kilometers on the, in the sea or even more it can it can go on uh, like surveillance on these areas medium range is a slighter less slightly lesser range and uh, and also it lasts for only few few hours, maybe like uh, 10 to 12 hours here, it's mentioned 12 hours. Um, the long range can actually last for more longer. It can it can fly for more than one day. It can do the surveillance. So whatever the, most of the uh, like uh, unidentified objects they see in the sky are mostly related to one of the UAS only because every uh, country designs their own UAS designs and it looks completely different and most of the designs you even not aware of, even not, even not have seen. It is not in uh, the commercial picture. So when you see a completely new uh, flying vehicle, they think that it is an uh, alien alien vehicle. But most of the cases, it is the it is a surveillance one which is flying over there, which has crossed its limit and caught the sight of uh, the people. Okay. Uh, the short range UAS is the normal quad rotor, uh, which is for the surveillance and it lasts for only 15 to 30 minutes uh, of flight time and uh, it can go up to 1000 feet. Yeah. So the next case. Okay. So the use cases uh, where can we use UAVs? One is defense. We have discussed few. So we'll be discussing uh, much more options and more in more detail in the next coming slides. Um, it will be used in defense and the surveillance, agriculture, package deliveries, automatic detection applications and industries. I'll explain all these one by one in the next upcoming slides. Okay. In case of, uh, this is in case of, this is a collective application area. So we do one by one. So food deliveries already, they have, uh, you must have heard of Amazon food delivery uh, drones. It has been currently stopped though, but it has it has already been oper in operation before past two one or two years. It was in operation for some time. Uh, food and mail deliveries and the medical delivery also. Uh, medical delivery in case of army camps and uh, in also in virtual reality applications. Inspection. I have a separate slide. I'll explain you further in the next slide. Uh, the public safety accident report and traffic monitoring. Traffic monitoring, uh, it, it can actually ease the process. Now, uh, I don't know, in few of the countries they're implementing, like uh, monitoring the status or uh, the drone will always survey a for a particular uh, range of kilometers and it, it updates you the traffic uh, then and while uh, after like a period of half an hour and say at which point in the traffic uh, you, you it is more traffic or uh, it can help in Google. Uh, Google also gives the traffic details, right? Where, where it's more traffic, which way you take, uh, it will be much easier. So this will give a more localized picture than the GPS satellite uh, navigation system. This will give a more localized picture of what is the traffic problem or if suppose, suppose an accident happened or something is over there, uh, some some something which is causing the traffic uh, due to some uh, fight, then this can, this can go to that area and then trigger the response 
for the police to go there or uh, it can give the location to the pinpoint than the GPS and say what is the issue also. And people from the remote area can serve, can can see what is happening. Maybe it can alarm also. In the future, it will be like uh, sensing an alarm device for the police to come. Maybe the crowd will disperse themselves uh, in certain cases. Taxi drones are a more uh, futuristic uh, picture. Uh, it's it's like a hover bike. Uh, it is not in uh, the current thing. It's all in research uh, areas now. Yeah. The next thing is, so mostly uh, the drones, if we use it in, uh, okay. This is military runs, which I already told you, this is a Reaper, uh, the military aircraft. This can actually, uh, this is completely autonomous one. And it can it can bomb uh, it can carry missiles and it, it is it is actually used for destructive purposes. It is called uh, hunter killer I guess. Its name is hunter killer. Uh, uh, like, and then uh, this is another uh, delta wing uh, UAV. And this is uh, DJI Phantom 2 if I'm not wrong. DJI Phantom 2. Uh, this is uh, this this can give more stable uh, uh, like uh, surveillance in a lot of areas like. Surveillance where we use maybe uh, in shipping industry in the harbors, or you can go to uh, like uh, the manufacturing plants uh, where the surveillance is required. I'll go to the next slide uh, and explain you the because the next slide has the details of surveillance. Yeah. So in case of agriculture, how, how they use this? It, it is like uh, the drone sometimes will be used for uh, the spraying the waters all over the the gra grassy fields and it can do it in a much shorter time compared to uh, like uh, human beings getting getting into the uh, like agricultural field and doing it. It can do it in uh, five to uh, ten minutes less uh, the over the entire field because it can go like uh, five meter to ten meter per second and then uh, also irrigate the uh, plants and uh, and they uh, it will be having cameras to identify uh, which of the fields need more uh, more irrigation or uh, uh, how, what is the green, uh, seeing the greenery of the green color of the plants, it can say uh, how fertile it is or it needs more plant, more irrigation or uh, more uh, water resource or it, it can identify and it can say using the computation techniques. And uh, these kind of applications I have seen more in uh, the Malaysia, Western Malaysia and uh, Indonesia where uh, we get uh, like uh, all, uh, like projects to do such stuff and uh, they also request us to uh, count the number of trees in a in the forest in a forest area they want to count the number of trees which is one of the challenging problem in computer vision uh, because a tree can have a tree's bushes can extend up to like uh, it is not like properly segregated so segregating each part of the tree might be uh, is a tougher task to do compared to other things so I have a video of this, so we can see one video regarding the applications. Yeah. So this is a DJI drone where they have portrayed uh, portrayed the agricultural application of their drone. So this is the system they used. To, this is the software they use for tracking the uh, track. Uh, I mean, uh, controlling the drone or getting the map of the drone. Now here it uses the GPS signals to go, uh, go navigate and uh, go in the particular path they want. Everything is done to the GPS system and uh, the water irrigation. The spraying capacity of the thing is when it goes in an inclined plane. Also, it can adjust its height due to the according to the terrain and it can it can plan the thing effectively. It can spray the water effectively in such cases, and its speed also can be adjusted. And based on the height, uh, you can choose the water water level, water spraying level required for the plants, and it can be controlled. Yeah. So let's get back to the presentation now. Uh, okay. Uh, then uh, the other applications, so we are done with agriculture, we go to inspection, 
in inspection um this is one of the one of my projects which i worked on this picture is not from my project but the thing is uh, it is an intact inspection uh, this is one of the toughest projects uh, in the uav industry uh, now uh, the what you have to do is you have to go to a completely dark environment and then you have to map everything in the tank suppose Hi, in tank. hello okay so in in boiler plants or in power plants uh, uh you have to get inside and see if there are any cracks or if there is a distortion in the map or in the, in the walls uh, they want to inspect every now and then so these areas are quite dangerous if you go into if you if a human being goes and uh, inspects there one uh, level by level uh in these cases they use uh, the drones and then the problem here the challenge why i say it is the toughest problem is uh there you will not have gps it is indoors obviously and the second thing is it is completely dark the boiler plants or the power plants it is completely dark and there is no light coming in and the third thing is you will have walls or not like square or or a circle they will have pillars in between and then you have to navigate between the pillars and then you have to have uh, there will be uh, the floor will not be very clean there will be pipes uh, going in between so you can imagine an atmosphere uh, atmosphere like that and then this drone has to navigate through all those places and uh, mostly they will be using the baraden lidar uh, which i'll explain about the lidar in the next slides lidar is basically like to get the laser data from the environment so laser can definitely work there but still laser data is not enough because lasers can fail in smoke fog dust in all these areas laser lidar will not be giving us a proper value even in if there is water uh, rain due to water droplets you cannot still trust it 100% or 70 80% so beyond that you need additional intelligence of camera or anything to give support to it so the next this one is in aircraft inspection suppose during the manufacturing or after the flight they want to inspect any cracks or any any problem with the aircraft uh, uh, in from industry air, aircraft uh, as such so they will they will inspect through the drones here and in the manufacturing industry uh, i think in india also they are in this one they are using for the manufacturing industry uh, the latest one in amravati i guess the the kia motors they were using one of my friend was working in the industry where they were using uh, uavs for getting update of the daily manufacturing process uh, so daily he goes there and then flies the drone over all over the place and then he up, he records the videos and daily he makes a powerpoint slide of how much work is completed across different uh, uh, departments so in car manufacturing industry different department for uh, wheels different department for the the plates and everything and different department for the engines so he he visits everything daily and then takes uh, the the records the data of the process happened and then he finally consolidates and every month uh, he used to update uh, how much works have been completed because it is a it is a vast space and they want to get the update from every industry every department possible so yeah this is one of the another application okay with this uh, we'll go much deeper into the other things okay so apart from it uh, if you want to add other applications then it is uh, another uh, request we get is uh, the package deliveries in sh in harbors where uh, all the ships will be uh, uh, like stationed uh, at at some points uh, like it will not be very close by it will be at, uh, i'm talking about massive ships so if they want to from the base station in the harbor they want to transfer some parcel or they want to transfer some cargo they want to use uh, drones in the in the thing to uh, to carry some 1 kg to 5 kg of load and then go to a particular place in the ship uh, in particular ship and then land on it the problems we may get is uh, here uh, the gps for landing might not be more accurate in the sea so it might be a uh, some part uh, the ship may be landed uh, like some part uh, some part into the sea also as well so they uh, we have to go there and then uh, you might not have the uh, gps so once the gps is lost then you have to trust on other sensors uh, then the camera comes into picture then uh, you'll be using the the landing pad h so you have to detect the landing pad and then uh, and then give a better view yeah so and then uh, you you have to detect the landing pad and then uh, exactly land in the center of it so it depends on the computer vision also in search of applications like this so these are the challenges in the current uav industry that's what i'm trying to share uh, yeah okay 
so let's get into the uh, some interesting part in the flight dynamics how it flies so whenever you talk about something which flies we we talk about three things roll yaw and pitch so if you follow here all the axes pitch axis roll axis and yaw axis is given here so this movement which i'm pointing which my arrow is pointing is the the left one is the roll okay so it's tilting left and right uh the principle is uh, if you go deeper then the they use the ailerons here in the plane for moving it so one aileron goes up one aileron goes down so that it it can tilt up uh, like roll uh, left and right you can see the aileron moving in opposite directions so it's basically the airfoil principle if you come into it so it's is it is blocking the flow so that the pressure inside uh, that side is increased to uh, roll this side that is one thing and the similar principle for pitching down and pitching up on the top right where the elevators at the back are going up and down so here both go in the same direction because you want it to uh, it is it is not tilting so it is just up and down pitch up and pitch down and for your your is the tail rudder here on top there's a rudder so this one helps you to just move the your the thing left or right in different directions okay one second so let's see one uh, uh, video regarding this to get a more uh, clear picture so the case is here uh, now we have to see the flight dynamics in quad rotor right suppose the quad rotor uh, suppose uh, the multi rotor instead of we have only single rotor and it is rotating so what happens is the problem in quad rotor is it is a it is a rotary wing so anything which rotates creates a momentum around it and also a torque so what happens is if there is only one rotor suppose i am giving example consider only one rotor so i'll show you the video for it uh simple problem yes so this is uh let's not get into the making of the drone this is a simple simple one rotor robot yeah so if you see it has only one rotor it is just a simple one which uh, which this is a controller for the uh, motor what i wanted to say is if it rotates right it will not be very stable it, what happen this this entire bottle this entire uh, uh, robot rotates completely because the torque created there is only one one propeller and then it creates the torque it makes it to uh, it, though it lifts it it will topple because it it just yaws around it just keeps yawing right or yawing left depending on the direction of the propeller so but here since the model is not so stable what happens is when he he starts to rotate it just uh, topples you can see when once the pressure increases once the thrust is necessary is as caught then the the thing comes in yawing part comes in and then it tries to yaw and that's why it lost the balance it he tries again the same thing happens so it tries to yaw slowly and then again falls so that is the problem in uh, thing so i i show this video because in quad rotor yeah so this is uh, for throttling up so we have to do what are the different movements uh, in a quad rotor one is going up and going down throttle up and throttle down and the other two are roll left and roll right pitch down pitch up and also yaw left and yaw right so for throttle up you have four motors here so in the four motors uh, we are taking a quad rotor for example for hexa it is different for uh, octa it is it is different different uh, mechanisms for for quad uh, we are considering quad only for now so here uh, you have the brushless dc motor uh, four brushless dc motors so so what happens is all are rotating at same speed here all should be rotating at same speed but the the two motors here will be rotating anti clockwise and the other two motors here will be rotating clockwise why because it is it is to balance the torque which makes the quad rotor to yaw around its place so we want to prevent it to yaw right so what we are doing is we are going to uh, like uh, balance the torque by by giving two motors one direction the other two motors the other direction so when you increase the when you increase the collective speed of all four at the same speed then this one throttle throttles up i mean the drone lifts up so yeah 
Yes. So the next one is yaw. So for yaw, how will how will you yaw yaw how will you achieve the yaw moment? Uh, that is, you have the same four motors. What you're doing is you are decreasing the speed of the uh, anti-clockwise motion. Okay, you are decreasing the speed of the anti-clockwise motion, and then and then increasing the speed of the clockwise motion. So what happens is this is having higher speed now. This produces higher thrust. This produces higher higher thrust. This produces lower thrust. This produces lower thrust. So what now? The now the case is now it is interesting. Now if you see, it will not roll right. It will not roll left. It will not pitch up, pitch down, because the balance. These two are balanced. These two are balanced. These two are balanced. The left side two motors are balanced. The right side two motors are balanced. The front two are balanced, and the bottom two are balanced. Only thing is the directionally the motors are having variable speed. So what? So what? Now what happens is it yaws right, because the clockwise motion it has a higher speed. So it it tends to make the uh, quad rotor to yaw right. Now let's get into other motion yaw left. It is similar where you you make the left side uh, I mean the anti clockwise motors to increase the speed clockwise motors decrease the speed and then but balance the speed here speed consolidated speed should be balanced every part so that it doesn't do any other motion it just yaws. So now we'll go to yeah the yaw left motion now we have to roll left. So in case of roll left. It is roll left is I already told you. Suppose you want it, I'll show it again. This is the roll left. Uh, so this is how this is roll left, roll roll right, and then pitch down, pitch up, and you're just giving an example again. So just to get a clear picture. So here now we are seeing roll left. Roll left is it has to tilt to the left. So now what you're doing is you are increasing the speed of this side. Obviously this is decreased. So what happens is it will it will come up. This thrust is higher, so this will lift. So this will this will go to the this will roll to the left and it starts uh, moving towards the left direction. So if you want to uh, point to go to the left direction, you'll roll left and then move straight. And then roll right is the opposite way. You have to increase the speed of these two and then decrease the speed of the other two for rolling right. And uh, pitch up. Pitch up is these two motors. So if you increase the speed of this motor, this, these two will come up. The first two will come up, and these two will go down. So then you can achieve the pitch up motion, and then pitch down is the reverse way, is the vice versa. So this one uh, goes up. The back part, back two motors goes up, and the front two motors comes down. That will achieve the pitch up motion, pitch down motion for the UAV. So I believe uh, this this gave you uh, some clear picture of how the UAV. Uh, flies and what are the things to be controlled? So uh, I'll give you some thirty seconds. Like uh, if you are, uh, if someone wants to answer this, why we need programming to control even an RC quad rotor? Does anybody have any idea? Because I gave the flight dynamics, I gave the other essay things. Anyone wants to answer for this? So I wait for thirty seconds and then I I proceed. If uh, anyone anyone uh, wants to. Uh, Answer, answer this. Anyone wants to answer this first? You can unmute and answer anyone. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I'll I'll explain myself. Maybe later in the session uh, we'll have the Q and A. So why we need a programming? Why we need programming even for a RC quad rotor. RC quad rotor is remote controlled quad rotor. So for that, why do we need programming? So the case is you still have four motors, right? You still have four motors. I told you one is throttle. The, these are the directional motions of the quad rotor: throttle up, throttle down, pitch up, pitch down, roll left, roll right, your left, your right. So, but you understand that for each motion which we do, throttle up, for example, you need to control all four motors. If you go for pitch down, you need to selectively control the first two and the next two. You mean the front two and the back two. You need to control in in sequence. So, uh, by ideally, you should have uh, individual control for every motor. But if you use individual control, you cannot control because you cannot uh, focus on controlling four. You cannot keep one stick for uh, left motor, one stick for right motor, one stick for right, uh, the third motor, fourth motor. If you keep like that, you will not be able to control the RC. So what happens is. 
you'll have a, you'll have a control which is like throttle up throttle down on the on the remote controller and you'll have one second yeah so if you see this one you can clearly get so if you see this picture so basically the quad rotor remote control will have only throttle up throttle down your left your right and then roll left uh, roll left roll right pitch up pitch down pitch up pitch down so all these each movement will control four motors so in order to in order for that you need to have you need to have controls like uh, you need to have a programming there in the embedded side in order to control one control throttle up if a command comes for throttle up from the receiver uh, from the transmitter and to the receiver the receiver give the signal to the microcontroller or the or the central processing system and and it it processes there whether it takes the decision uh, how to move the move the robots uh, like move, move the quad either up or down so that is how it is done and uh, that is why you need so but is it the only thing required no uh you need much more things to uh the programming is needed for much more things in the rc quad which is interesting uh suppose you want to control the four motors that is what i told you this is for controlling the four motors through single joystick control from transmitter is one thing second thing is uh for deciding the rate of speed of control of each motors with respect to the pulse from the transmitter yeah uh so the transmitters there will have analog speed control so how much pulse you give that much you will be you will be able to uh, get the get the speed so here the, the rate of speed of control of each motor is with respect to the pulse from the transmitter using pid control yeah so uh, the what happens is the, it just uh, explains the analog speed control uh, that can be given from the transmitter stick uh, for controlling the system uh, so it can change the speed because that is one important part for doing all the four motions right throttle or yaw or pitch or roll uh, you need to control the speed of uh, the particular part of the things so that is the for the speed control also another one is uh, it also gives uh, autonomous stabilizations to the quad rotor to make it stable the thing is uh, rc quad rotor is very stable like when you fly the the ones which are available in the current market are are very stable because uh they have their internal uh, autonomous core running inside pnd control system which is running inside which helps in uh, uh controlling the uh, like uh, which which helps in stabilization of the drone and also it helps in helps in giving the feedback from gyro and accelerometer it takes so whenever you want to give a roll left or roll right it takes the inputs from the gyro and accelerometer also to precisely move uh, like countering the wind directions suppose the wind is very high also uh you need to give more control right so the gyro and accelerometer will help you in giving the same amount of control when there is no wind in case of wind conditions also so that you will have some minute autonomous stabilization to the drone so that it will not topple or it is more stable and also when you see the latest drones the parrot parrot drone of germany or the or the dji if you take for example they will not uh, like oscillate at all because uh, all the autonomous stabilization pid has been tuned to perfection so when you fly it is very easy to fly it is not like flying a, a a drone which is prepared by yourself but yeah once you prepare the drone and you fly yourself you will get the kick of flying uh, than flying any commercial drones because commercial drones it is easy to fly and uh, there are no much challenges in the commercial drone if you uh, if you want to be a pilot yeah so let's come to the quad rotor parts uh yeah in the quad rotor parts uh, like what are the parts required one is the battery required and the flight controller flight controller is the one which decides which takes the input from the receiver and decides what kind of motions to give the motors for moving moving up or moving left or moving right and also the flight controller will decide uh the will also do the autonomous stabilizations using the gyro and accelerometer sensors and there's a brushless motors are used for the uh, for the for providing thrust and everything and these are the uh, these mechanical parts the steel rods and everything so let's go and there is particular important part called esc electronic speed controllers so we'll go to the next slide 
So these are the purpose of uh, these are the different parts. First, we will see the purpose one by one in the next slides. So first is the embedded development board, which I already told you. Embedded development board, which I already told you, like this is for integrating the whole system with the here. It's the embedded development board. The purpose is to integrate the whole system here. Okay, so the whole system first is the embedded development board. It has the accelerometer and gyro under this IC, particularly in this IC. So this is an accelerometer and gyro sensor, and then the microcontroller system, and then uh, the things going into the receiver from uh, the receiver is here, and the motor and the ESC. Sorry, the receiver is here. This one is the uh, receiver, and the ESC, the motors on four motors. So the case is. Um, this is just a buzzer for any alarms and the battery here. So this is the central interface for everything and it decides the movement of the drone based on your commands from the receiver and also it uses accelerometer and gyro to uh, change the, uh, like uh, to give autonomous stabilizations to the quad rotor system. Mm -hmm. That is one thing. And uh, buzzer, okay. Yeah, and this is LED strip in case of uh, night, if you want to the quad rotor to, if you want to know where the quad rotor is playing at night conditions, then uh, you may be pr referring to this, uh, the LED street lights. You can have these strips on the quad rotor to identify where it is playing. Maybe to identify the direction where it is flying. You want to know pitch up or pitch down. You want to know the direction of the flight, forward direction. So they'll have LEDs to know what direction the UAV is flying when it once it is in air. So the, this is about it. And then brushless DC motors. Brushless DC motors are like, uh, this is the mechanism behind it. If you take for matter, this is just uh, the magnet. It's like usual motor, but the thing is it can move at very high speeds. It can switch at very high speeds. It can switch the direction at very high speeds and it can the speed can be controlled very minute here. And uh, the, we want a speed of like 12,000 RPM, 1,000 RPM to 12,000, 20,000 RPM kind of motors so that's why they go to brushless dc motors and then it basically works like uh, they excite uh, two coils at a time and then keep switching so red and green gets uh, suppose in the first image red and green gets excited first and then the uh, after exciting green and blue gets excited and the blue one red and red and green it goes on so that triggers the electromagnet in, in the center to keep moving into the moving the directions uh, based on the excitement uh, the, i mean the pulse given to the magnets uh, propellers uh, basically there are pushers and pullers why there are pushers and pullers is i told you already like uh, here in the video i mentioned that uh, auto to line mix yeah so here i mentioned that these two will rotate in different direction. These two will rotate in clockwise direction, anti-clockwise. So the case is when you want to rotate in um, anti-clockwise direction, but still you want to provide the thrust up upwards. So this this motor, which is moving in clockwise, also should provide thrust up in up direction. This motor, which is rotating in uh, clock uh, anti-clockwise direction, should also provide the thrust in upward direction. So if you if you take for that matter, you cannot. You cannot fix it to uh, such a case where, uh, uh, like, uh, use the same kind of propellers for both the cases. It's not possible because both uh, two anti-clockwise propellers will give thrust in the downward direction. Then, so they will use something called pullers and pushers. Both are different kind of propellers. So the pushers will actually give the thrust when the when the clockwise motors are connected to the pushers. It will give thrust upwards. When the anti-clockwise motors are connected to the pullers, it will give the thrust upwards. So that's why they use two kind of propellers here because of the different uh, different directional movements of the quad. So the next thing is, yeah. Um, next thing, electronic speed controllers. Electronic speed controllers, they use it for the motors. Why they use it for the motors? Motors need high pulse. You mean 12 volts to operate. Microcontroller system works at five volts. And also they need to have high switch switching devices for changing the speed. So these electronic speed controllers will will convert the speed will 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 help you in uh, in rapid switching mechanisms and also convert the five volts uh, from here to twelve volts here. It will not exactly convert. It will just switch from the battery. The battery will have a twelve volt connection to this, and this will give the path to it. Depending on the pulse from the uh, microcontroller, it decides to give how much speed to the brushless ESC. 
I mean the brushless motors. And the power distribution board. Power distribution board is simple, like it is for it is the distribution board. Here you have the power distribution board here. This is the power distribution, positive, negative, positive, negative. So here the uh, embedded board and the power distribution board both are combined. Both are combined together. So, but usually the power distribution board can be separate. It will be in a separate board also. So this is positive negative for the motor pulse. I mean, I told you right, this will give you 12 volts. So this is the battery power which gives 12 volts to this and then it is connected to this and the ESC signal is taken from here, ESC. So it is a connection, this combination is the ESC. So here and then here, so the four battery powers, so you need a power distribution board for transmitting the batteries, taking the power from here and then giving it to different parts of the system, whichever needs 12 volts. And um, the next one is the accelerometer sensors and the gyro sensors. Um, Accelerometer sensors and the gyro sensors, which you already know, it's the initial measurement units. So it, it it can be of different types. You can use the capacitive technique or the piezoelectric technique or any other techniques. So mostly they use the capacitive mechanism uh, in case of accelerometer and gyro sensors. Gyros can give you, uh, can make you detect uh, even minute motions which accelerometers cannot give you or even human beings cannot witness the uh, movement that gyros can actually help you identify it. So if you take here, um, so this is the mechanism if you take. So here quad rotor, uh, when uh, I already told you about the autonomous uh, balancing algorithm, right? So this is in a balanced state. So whenever, because of the wind, uh, the quad rotor is being pushed to the left, it, it uh, tries to restore itself to the balanced position itself. Even though you are flying, the, the recent commercial drones will help you move this back to the balanced position by itself. Um, that is that, that is the main purpose of this IMU sensors here. IMU sensors are used. Oh, sorry. IMU sensors are used. Uh, one second. Yeah, IMU sensors are used basically for this purpose uh, to restore the action and also to give. So this is the orientation balancing. You mean the yaw due to the wind, the yaw direction is tilted. You don't know the direction. It tries to fix the direction and uh, show the forward direction of the uh, drone. And also when in object uh, position navigation, in case of if you want to follow the object, then also this IMU will be a part, but IMU cannot completely guide you in uh, going to the object. You need camera, you need LiDAR, everything, but it's a part to uh, navigate this. Uh, it is also an integral part of the fusion mechanism to give the UAV to navigate to a particular object. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, PID, I think all of you have a, uh, one an understanding of PID here, so the proportional integration uh, derivative things. Uh, so basically, I'll give a, a basic intro. Like PID, a proportion is just for um, going to the system. Proportion is the normal balancing system whenever uh, you want whatever you want to achieve to the set point. Integration will give you will make you uh, achieve the proper set point. Uh, that's why when they increase the integration values, when you increase the derivative value. It will rapid the response. It will you can actually achieve the output faster. Set point output faster. It, it actually uh, increases the response time. Yeah. So transmitters and receivers. I already told you. So the the uh, there will be two sticks. This one can move in up and down directions for throttle up, throttle down. Your left and your right. The left stick uh, and the right side can do roll left and roll right in uh, roll directions and the pitch down and pitch up in the up and down directions. And then you will have a screen for the display and everything. Yeah, so this is how the system is and the receiver. Mostly they use the Futaba transmitter and receivers. This is quite common uh, transmitter and receiver for RC quad system. Okay, so the basic uh, understanding of UAV ends here. So now we are going to a slightly advanced topic Okay, so slightly advanced, but still I will cover the basic outline of it, uh, understanding that uh, all of you might not have been from same background. So we'll go into the topics of the advanced uh, techniques, whatever is required in the UAV. So when you when you talk about advanced, uh, advanced drones, right? Uh, advanced autonomous unmanned aerial vehicles, the basic things required is, the first thing is computer vision, computer vision image processing. And then uh, it, it needs to localize itself. It needs to know in the environment where it is standing. In a, in a particular uh, place, X, Y, where it is there. Where is the, what is the X, Y coordinate of the drone in a particular room? 
autonomous navigation suppose it wants to know, go from x1 comma y1 to x2 comma y2 in case of mathematic uh, formula so then how will you navigate it what are the challenges there slam is uh, simultaneous localization and mapping which we'll discuss further and machine learning is feeding data is taking uh, real life examples and then feeding the robot like the experience which i was talking to you before right uh, like you should be giving the robot the experience uh, which you want to give so that kind of uh, thing the experience you can transfer through the machine learning techniques yeah that is about it so the machine learning actually like they'll suppose they want to detect a person they will give all possible uh, examples of a person they will train the system and then they will be achieving the output based on it so now here we will focus uh, mostly on computer vision and slam in this in this lecture we'll focus mostly on computer vision and slam slam will always uh, will almost cover the localization and autonomous navigation as well so we'll see these these three four topics uh, as the basic level what are the softwares used here so first before going into the advanced part first we need to know the what are the advanced sensors used here so these are just examples okay so there are a lot of uh, high level and latest sensors coming up so i wanted to just add a few few ones among those the first one is the flow pro thermal camera so this is a thermal camera so thermal cameras why they use in uavs is to suppose uh, uh, in a, in, a, in a runway you want to detect uh, suppose we had a project uh, on the unmanned aerial vehicles where in the runway we need to detect any coke coke ins or any detonators or any cracks in the runway Uh, for the flight before taking off it needs to check so we will run for 3 minutes along the road uh, road runway and then see whether there are any uh, cracks or any any cluster of uh, craters or any other things like that to identify whether something is there so in such cases right the clusters of the the cluster of craters or cracks or tin will have a different thermal value which is from the uv uv rays from the sun will have a different value the heat value will be different so in such cases thermal cameras can give you a clear picture of uh, like which one is more cool which one is more th so you can easily identify cracks various if you take an uh, like normal rgb camera uh, you might not be able to identify that clearly com uh, compared to this so thermal is uh, one of the major uses in uh, uav field and this is z camera z is more famous i think all of you must have already know this is a, the specialty is it's a stereo camera it has two two cameras left and right like how we have eyes so basically stereo vision is uh, like how we use uh, eyes to see the environment and we know the depth right because we have two eyes we know the depth of a particular object we know the depth how at what distance it is being placed from a particular place so when when you take a z camera right so whatever the particular place it is placed so it has to uh, similar to the eyes it has two uh cameras which will help you identify the depth easily it gives it gives to more precision and you can get uh, much better values uh, but it is not that close to lidar but it can definitely give in the in case of cameras it can give a good depth uh, value in case of stereo vision and there is a complete geometry behind it to to study it is which is very interesting which is called epipolar geometry where uh, the epipolar lines they talk about so how the stereo vision they used to uh uh like pro uh, find the depth of the object how they use the disparity map or where they displaced to compare the left and right images and get the depth of the object is a complete different study it's a whole new study the stereo vision okay and now mine so the next thing is uh, the two lidars here one is weldin lidar so the the two lidars 64 bit and 32 bit lidars these two and sorry 64 lines and 32 lines lidar this is 16 lines lidar weldin lidars so weldin 64 lines and 32 lines are mostly used in autonomous uh cars if you see for matter everything most of the autonomous cars which is being developed now will have this 64 or 32 uh lines lidar on top of the car and this this one is mostly used one second yeah this one is mostly uh the 16 line lidars are mostly used in case of the drone uh in case of the uavs uh yeah because it is it is light and also it can be easily portable so this is used and sometimes the cars will also use 16 line lidar 16 line bladen lidars in order to get the uh, like they will use more 16 line lidars on each side of the 
four sides of the car they use 1169 lidar to get the data so it is basically it will have it is like a 3d map you will get because this all this glittering blue color will give you the laser values all are transmitting lidar laser light and everything will give you a value so 360 degree you will get the value so this one is hokio lidar this one is like 270 degrees it works for 270 degrees it is not 360 but also it is only one line hokio lidar is only one line lidar veladine is 16 lines 32 lines and 64 lines the picture shown here and hokio but hokio is uh, more stable and uh, it can give more uh, resolution points in case of the single line only it can give more resolution the uh, terms of hokio okay. okay so let's go to computer vision basics because we see the sensors now which is used in advanced uh, uavs now let's go into computer vision basics uh, just get the grasp of it so just uh, for newcomers who who are not into image processing i'll just give a brief uh, like two three slide introduction to image processing uh, like it will not be too much so don't worry it will not be very basic so just we see the whatever things to understand the lecture so as you all know the all images will be stored in digital form so what you see all like numbers when you see a image when you take an image from the camera it all translates to a number and then there are color images occupy 3d space black and white images in 1d that in the next slide i'll show the picture you will clearly understand it basically means that the color images will be stored in three frames black and white images will be stored in only one frame uh, every data of an image is stored as picture elements called pixels pixels you already know so it's the smallest part of the image uh, each pixel carries a value yes so next we see this so you see this uh, picture this one is the image and if you if you break down completely to a particular part here which i am showing now it will show the values like this it these are the values inside this image so when you zoom in we go to pixel when you go to pixel it is just become color when you go to color the color is a particular value so that value is what you see so here you will get better understanding so every picture suppose you have a picture like this let the colors be the picture itself so every color yellow will have one value uh, minute yellow will have mild yellow will have another value white will have 255 complete uh, white and uh, 255 color and then red will have different value so it depends for everything so every pixel here will store a 8 bit value 8 bit values that's why it came 256 2 per 8 that is 256 values so every pixel can store 256 uh, different values that means 256 different levels of color it can store but the point is only for gray scale you can store 8 bit because gray to white it varies from 0 to uh, 255 so here you can store 255 values but when you take color images you need r g p so you need three uh, three frames so three frames will be stored like this as i show in the next image this is black and white this is the gray scale image uh, the right side is the color image so color image if you break down this is the zoomed in value okay this is an image which is zoom zoomed in and then i am showing the value which is inside it so now you see r g b all these values are 71 44 70 so this one is the value actual value of the violet color here so it is stored in three frames r frame g frame and the b frame uh, when you take the a uh, gray scale image on the right it is just stored in one single frame which is like black and white so the extreme case is white 255 and the bottom case is black which is zero so here it, it's only takes only one pixel value so gray scale that is why uh, in image processing mostly they will whenever you are doing edge detection or any other uh, small detections right uh, like small detections in the sense when you're doing high power processing when you want to do uh, any shape detection or object detection they mostly break down the color into gray scale because you can only process on minimum values only one value per pixel but whereas if you process a color image you need to process three values per pixel which will be computationally expensive and also it will be complexing your algorithm basically so so by knowing this what is we are coming at we are coming at a point where uh, the image uh, image processing okay whatever the techniques used in image processing whatever they say edge detection or template matching or detecting a shape 
or object detection, it is all numbers. It is all pixel numbers. So you need to use a formula. So this is actually a matrix. Whatever the resolution of the image will be a matrix. Suppose this is 1064 cross, okay, don't go for 1064. Suppose this is 264 cross 132 pixel, okay? 264 cross 132, the, I mean the resolution. So 264 and 132. So in this case, the values processed will be in 264 and 164 scale. And the, and the thing is RGB, uh, images yeah so the whatever the uh, the shape detection object detection you're doing it is basically processing all the values in 264 cross 134 uh, pixel images in the image so in these pixels you will be operating this is a matrix 264 cross 134 is a matrix and you will be operating you will be doing operations in this matrix in order to find where is the shape where is the counter we can see that example one example in the next slide so that you will get a clear picture of uh, the basics of image processing yeah, so it is very difficult to accumulate the concept of image processing in a single four or five slide, but I try to just uh, uh, squeeze a bit to uh, like cover a lot of topics. So, so image from image processing operations, which I was talking about before, one is image enhancement and or varying the intensity level of the image. How can you vary the intensity level of the image? Yeah. So here, if you take left and right, right, so the intensity yeah. level, this is because this is having some fog and this all are removed and the right image is completely processed, if you take for that matter. So in this case, if you see the right image, right, yeah, um, this value, image enhancement weight, the R value, G value, B value, this is either increased or decreased based for image enhancement depending on the application. So that is what is image enhancement. That is a very simple image processing technique. Then slowly resizing and cropping. Resizing is, suppose you have a 1064 cross uh, 982 pixel image. You want to re resize it to 640 cross 480. Then that is called resizing. Uh, the pixel, pixel values are decreasing there. Cropping is just cropping a picture that you already know. Edge and feature detection. Edge detection is wherever there are sharp transitions of color that will be taken as edge. Feature is like marbles or uh, whatever is having a different lines or uh, stripes. So all these be can, can be taken as features. Yeah. And uh, filter is noise filters. There are many probability filters uh, for that matters to you know, remove the noise uh, occurring with the system due to uh, the intensity differences due to sunlight is a noise, for example. Or sometimes uh, the clear picture having occl uh, occlusion is a noise. So the the noise can be of any form in a picture. Sometimes the the pixelated images have have some grains in the due to the camera inherent properties that can be a noise in the image. So everything the needs filtering uh, as a pre-processing technique. Template matching is finding a template. Suppose R zero three here is a template. I match the empty image to find where R zero three is. This one. And object detection and pattern recognition. Yeah, so it is the it is you know uh, the basic things. And object tracking is making the drone to move along the object wherever the object is moving, like the ball or anything. Ball tracking or human tracking robots. Yeah. So we come to a particular part where is the we use OpenCV library uh, for for vision, right? Uh, for computer vision. Uh, you can use MATLAB or Scilab or OpenCV, but I would prefer you to use OpenCV because this is an open source. The first thing is it is open source, which is which actually qualifies, which actually qualifies uh, everything uh, like uh, from it because uh, MATLAB and uh, Scilab has some limitations. MATLAB it is not open source, but OpenCV is uh, is more more than equal to MATLAB because uh, we have a lot of implementations done in OpenCV library. So you can you can refer and you can refer the codes. You can actually use if it is an open source. The codes are also open source. You can use the implementations and uh, use it in your project. Um, next is the most used library for computer vision. Yeah, this is the most used library. I can bet you on that. And then uh, the why OpenCV is used is it eases the process. Whatever I'm saying, like filter or edge and feature detection, resizing, image enhancement, template matching, object detection, uh, these all involve some concepts. Suppose, uh, like you want to detect some some shapes. So these all involve some mathematical calculations of the pixel values which is in the image. So when you try to do it, 
yourself it will take a lot of time to actually put in the filters inside and do the matrix roll and do a for loop for every pixel in the image and do it so in in order to make the process easy the open cv library provides you the functions which can be used to implement the uh, like uh, whatever the functions whatever the applications you want to use the image processing for so that's what it mentions the next line all internal calculations and operations required for for performing any basic image processing operation or encoded as open cv functions so this open cv has a library like i think most of you know what is arduino right so arduino how it eases the process suppose adding a timer is very easy in arduino adding a spi protocol a serial peripheral protocol is very easy i to c protocol is very easy so all is integrated into arduino as a library similarly open cv is constitute uh, like accom uh, accomplishes everything like whatever the functions mostly used in the uh, computation environment it it uh, compresses it as functions and uses along the uh, thing for for its applications that's why it is very easy to use but the complexity is it increases when you go in further uh, uh, more accuracy kind of detections um, yeah the programming languages basically used are c++ and python uh, anything is okay if you know c++ only you can still go ahead and try open cv and uh, the major advantage is integrating matlab with ros is, i don't know nobody uses matlab with ros i never seen but you can still use matlab with ros but it is not that efficient you can choose to use the open cv library is what i have always seen or worked with with the ros environment which is very comfortable to use it is very easy to include the library and everything along with it Uh, I think someone has to mute the mic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. So this is just a funny image I just added. Like, uh, you see, uh, people uh, people get afraid when the programming level increases. Once again, I think uh, someone has to mute the mic, uh, please. Ah uh, yes, yes. Thank you. So here. uh it is a quite a funny image to just say people actually in engineering i did electrical and electronics engineering i was actually equally afraid like you like uh, to get into programming but i was very interested in robotics but programming part i you always get into the electronics and uh, electrical parts and then i do the algorithm but programming i initially had a hesitation to carry on but once i step into the robotics field as a professional then i understand that programming is is actually very easy once you know the algorithm right um uh, it is not that it no, it, it does not be feared like how it's shown in the image like um it is how do i say it is uh, the main main uh, thing in robotics is suppose you are interested in robotics or unmanned aerial vehicles you want to get into the software the main understanding you should get is the technology i mean the uh, the algorithm behind using in every application which i am talking about the algorithm is the is the crux once you know the algorithm python or c++ java or any other programming language for matter doesn't matter okay it actually doesn't matter i can promise you because i i never see c++ or python programming java as a different language whenever i want i just think of the algorithm i see how to proceed with the algorithm uh, so i have a i have a clear picture of the flow so you should you should know one basic uh, programming language for that for that matter maybe c or c++ and understand how the program flow is it it doesn't vary much when you go to python or other things in the syntax varies the way of the flow varies that's it but the way of implementation or using the finding the crux the algorithm won't vary so that is that is one thing i wanted to share with you because uh, that can actually uh, help some people to get into the programming and this thing so let's see an example now of uh, open cv uh, example of a program so i have a program shape for shape detection which is uh, here so this is the uh, ubuntu environment for uh, installing the i mean the for running the c make many people would have worked on some compilers for compiling the c++ program but this is an ubuntu environment for so i've i've just taken a simple program to detect the shape okay so this one if you this is the c make list file so in the first let me just overview of the program let me not explain the program completely this is just a example program you can find it in open cv library uh, so here you declare all the open cv uh, like uh, functions or the libraries linked with the functions you are using the code 
and then you get once you get it to the code this code is for shape detection right so there is one function for finding the, this is a self written angle function and also this is just for labeling this one this function is for labeling and this one is for um, the angle finding the angle okay so here we come come into here you are loading the image here it's using the function called i am read cd is to i am read to load the function this is the location of my uh, the image i'm using here so whenever it is empty it is written minus 1 okay so and i told you right it is very easy to convert so here convert color if you give source source image and then gray uh, convert to gray color this is source so gray is the matrix you have created previously so this is source destination and this is the conversion cd to bgr to gray so this is how the function is so the example function this is for converting color suppose you want to convert color uh, by mathematical operation this this code entire code you should use it for it because uh, I, i think we have to use at least six lines or seven lines for implementing this one thing which is what the open cv makes it easier and uh, if you go here this is scanny edge detection similarly for edge detection finding out the gradient thresholds uh, between the uh, like uh, high frequency in uh, like transitions of colors so you can find there is scanny is one one technique for finding the edge detection so here they have did, uh, done the edge detection also they have done the color conversion also and then they are using counters they are finding counters and they have different techniques for finding you can change these variables to change the techniques to find the counters so once it finds the counters of the thing of the objects or of, of the of the shapes which are which are like closed closed structures so once the closed structures are identified it goes into all the closed structures one by one it accesses through the array one by one and then it checks the angle on the number of corners in the image so when the corner is only to up to 3 when the approx size dot size is equal to 3 i mean there are only three corners in the thing then it categorizes as triangle the closed image when it has only three it categorizes as triangle and when the thing has more than four it checks the angle minimum cos and max cos these are angles get the lowest and highest cosine use the decrease of tangent these are the angles to find so when the angles are within this limit then we categorize as a rectangle a pentagon or hexagon based on it so and finally these are the things to show the image so don't get afraid seeing this image and also here it is the area to this is the function for finding the area of the image this is to draw the bounding rectangle of on the image once after we find the shape so uh, the purpose i is told you explain the part by part is not to get uh, like uh, afraid of the code or something this is not a very complicated code it is just the algorithm they have implemented how a human being tries to find out the shape you just uh, implement the same algorithm inside and then i just explain the block by block uh, functioning part of the code here so finally it will display the source image and the destination image here okay so this is one thing and the other thing is see make lists whenever you want to compile something in ubuntu you want to uh, you cannot directly compile using the uh, like you can use any ide if you want for compiling but here i use see make list which is which is much more comfortable and easy to use so i just give you a overview of it it is just um, it's giving the see make is is nothing but a compiler software for ubuntu okay so it gives the see make minimum requirement thing you need to declare this and then what is the name of the project and then uh, include current directory yeah. you can choose to set it on or off so here you give open cv what we are using open cv library right so it, we are telling the system to find package open cv and then uh, uh, all the directories and everything linked with it attached to the system so these five lines will be doing that purpose for you and then i am linking the code shape detect.cpp whichever i explained you here to the sources so and then we are an executable uh, using the command here and then link all library